it's time to start prepping for Thanksgiving. And of course, the star of the show is always the turkey. So that is what we are focusing on this week. Um, it is the night before I actually cook. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and prep the turkey and let it sit in the dry brine or rub, whatever you want to call it, um, overnight. However, you do not have to let it sit overnight. You could just season it and pop it in the oven immediately. Um, it's really just going to depend on what works better for you. Um, obviously, the longer that it can sit, then the better off you'll probably be. So, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, remove any jewelry or watches so that they don't get messed up. And we're going to need to open up our turkey packaging. Uh, mine's been thawing in the fridge for about three days, um, sitting in a pan so that if it drips, then it doesn't go all over the fridge. Uh, this one is about ten and a half pounds, so it'll happily feed a couple people. And you're just gonna remove all the exterior packaging first. And if you cannot thaw your turkey for three days in the fridge, you could do a quick thaw in your sink overnight. Uh, just make sure to flush the water occasionally and refill. Okay, so remove the giblets and the neck and set aside to make gravy. You'll need to uh, bag those up and keep them in the fridge if you are um, going to be doing your brine overnight. Now, I'm going to give this a quick rinse and then pat dry and then we can uh, season with our dry brine. Now we're going to go ahead and grab our pan and prepare our turkey without transferring the raw turkey, which of course is poultry and contains things like salmonella, um, over any kind of surfaces that come in contact with food. So we definitely want our pan right here next to the sink to make the transfer. We're going to grab a couple, couple paper towels and kind of blot the turkey dry. Alright, and then next up, our butter, which we're going to use to make the rub adhere. Take half a stick. tablespoons of salt and that might seem like a lot but it is a brine without the liquid one tablespoon of thyme one teaspoon two teaspoons of ground sage so this is gonna take forever but I really like fresh ground over the stuff that comes pre-ground in the can. So here we go. Okay, that has to be at least a teaspoon. So I'm gonna call it there. Quarter teaspoon of ground allspice. Quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Okay, so we have our lovely tur turkey ready. We have our rub prepared. And I'm just going to mix it up with my fingers. And we have our melted butter. So, first things first is we need to dress our wings. Alright, so the uh, turkey wings we're just going to tuck up under the body. 
and the weight of the body will actually just keep those pinned down. And same thing on the other side. Just uh, pull the wing out and tuck the tip under. And don't worry about snapping it or anything because the uh, the wings don't usually come out that great anyway, so nobody's going to be eating them. Butter. And because this is melted butter going onto a cold turkey, it will probably re-solidify on the bird. Now, could you use, say, olive or canola or vegetable oil? Um, you could, but if you really want this turkey to turn out brown and pretty, then you probably want to stick with butter. Okay, this turkey seems to be well coated. So, just pour any extra into the cavity directly. Next up, our dry rub, and it's the same thing. We're just going to uh, put it on and press it in and make it look really pretty. So, so, same as with the butter, we're just going to uh, take the remaining rub and put it down into the cavity. Now, for the yucky part, take your hand, work it into your bird, and try to press some of that rub around the inside of the cavity just to uh, help to evenly distribute it. Okay. Turkey rub is done. Now we're just going to wash our hands. Um, I'm going to stick this in the fridge, which means I need to wrap it in foil. Because one, the, uh, the fridge will dehydrate it. And two, I don't want any of that funky fridge smell getting into my bird. So I'm going to uh, take care of that. Obviously you can skip that step if you're going straight to the oven. So it is the actual day that we will roast our turkey and I just pulled this gorgeousness out of the fridge. Um, you can see here I've got it on my rack already and quite a bit of juice came out overnight but that's okay because there's still more than enough left in the bird to keep it delicious. So, we're going to start off by preheating our oven, first of all, and we're going to crank it up to 500. How am I supposed to crank it up to 500 if you don't go faster? There we go. Okay, while that preheats, we can prepare our turkey triangle. Start off with about a square of aluminum foil. And then we're going to fold one corner down to the opposite edge to get a 90 degree angle. There we go. Perfect triangle. Ta-da! Now, you want to lay it over the breast with the top corner facing back toward the cavity. 
and I'm trying to press it over the breast to form it. Because once it's been in the oven at 500 for 30 minutes, then you do not want to be pressing foil over your hot turkey. So, there we go. And make sure that doesn't actually touch anything, because it just touched a raw turkey. Um, next, we need to get our handy dandy probe thermometer, and we're going to unwrap the uh, wire, and we want to put it into the breast pretty deep along the ribs, but without actually touching the ribs. Now, all we have to do is set the timer for 30 minutes. See, 30 minutes. Okay, we just hit 500, so time for the turkey to go in the oven. And you want it to be kind of in the center of the oven. So I've actually got mine on the next to lowest rack. There we go. That wire's going to hang out and we're just going to start the timer. So in about 30 minutes that's going to beep and let me know that I need to put on the turkey triangle and lower the heat. Okay, there is the alarm. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off. So, we are just going to uh, pop our turkey triangle on, and we're going to bring this down to 350. heats unevenly so I'm just going to rotate the pan before I pop that back in. There we go. Now we are going set our temperature alert for 161 degrees. Alright, so gravy, um, I've got my pan preheating, plus a tablespoon of butter, and we're going to start with our neck, get that in. Next up, all the juicy bits. And before we add our water, we're going to go ahead and just let these uh, sit in the pan and brown up a bit. And that'll add some extra flavor to the, uh, to the turkey stock. And just to help these brown up a little faster, I'm going to add some salt, which will help to draw up the moisture sooner. And once the moisture's out, then it'll get brown. And a little extra flavor with some pepper. Okay, I think that looks good. 
Time to add our two cups of water. And we're gonna just pop this lid on. And turn the heat down a bit to three. And we're just gonna let that kind of uh, steep and get lots of turkey flavor imbued in the liquid before discarding the solids. Okay, our turkey stock made from the neck and giblets seems to be ready. Pull these solid pieces out. And then I have a bowl ready here to collect the liquid, plus a strainer to strain out these solids. Alright, there we go. And as you can see, the pan's a little bit grimy, so I'm going to give that a rinse and wipe that out before finishing the gravy. Okay, first of all, off. Oh, hello gorgeous. Okay, let's pull that. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so we just pulled our turkey, and we're going to set this aside for a second. There we go. And now we can get to our drippings. Alright, I've just pulled my turkey from the oven and transferred it to a baking sheet. And I'm just going to cover it up with some foil for it to rest. And I'm going to leave the probe in, because if I pull it out now, then it's just going to squirt out all the juice, so... Don't want that to happen. I want the juice to stay in the turkey. There we go. Now, to wrap up our gravy, our pan's going to go back on the burner. And we're going to turn that up to about four. turkey stock back in, as well as about one cup of our two cups of chicken broth. To thicken our gravy, we're going to use about half a cup of cornstarch, and we're going to whisk this into a slurry. Okay, and... Before we add our slurry, we just need to make sure to strain our drippings. Alright, now for the fun part. Slurry into our liquid and keep whisking. fun part, you just keep stirring until it thickens up and magically turns into gravy. Come here you go. 
and it is still juicy and delicious. And now I'm going to take way too big of a bite. Let's get some gravy on there first. Mmm. Perfection. Actually, when I was making the gravy, I didn't even need to add any extra salt because the um, the drippings ended up having most of the original two tablespoons of salt that we put into the brine. So, it did not need it. Mm. The uh, flavors really did get down into the turkey. Maybe not as much as a wet brine, but still, you know, more than enough to make it tasty. Okay, this turkey is actually so good that um, you uh, you don't even need the gravy. Mm. There, I said it. Because when turkey is cooked properly and is still juicy, and delicious, then you don't need the gravy to cover it up. Save the gravy for like mashed potatoes and your aunt's dry cornbread dressing. Mm. Yeah. Don't need it. So anyway, I hope you guys have a very happy Thanksgiving and that your turkey is the talk of the town by following these extremely simple instructions. Mm. This is so good. I don't think I'm even going to have to worry about leftovers. If you think I'm lying when I say I'll eat half a turkey tonight. <laughs>